Jay Baruchel stopped by recently to reflect on some of his past roles. And I do declare he had some interesting things to say about undeclared. Take a look. Hi there, gang. I'm Jay Baruchel. I have worked on a lot of fun stuff over the years, and I'm going to tell you about some of it in a segment called Way Back in the J, because my name rhymes with day. Start uh, at the beginning. Uh, are you afraid of the dark? My first gig ever was getting killed uh, by a monster in a swimming pool. The real huge point of pride to this day that the director's first the director's note uh, direction after take one was uh, that's too real, which uh, that's never a note I've ever gotten. Almost famous, uh, or as uh, it was called when I shot it, uh, the Untitled Cameron Crow Project. They are here. They're, they're at the, the plaza. I graduated high school a year late because of it. Cameron Crowe is, uh, is just like one of the great uh, artists of my lifetime. And he's somebody that I've known uh, since I was 17 and someone that was incredibly kind with his time. And really, when I think Almost Famous, I think playing Frisbee with Cameron Crowe and talking about Billy Wilder. Okay. Undeclared, uh, or as it was called when I worked on it, the Untitled Judd Apatow Project. And handsome, and, and I've gained he's weight. Five. You were... Um, Snobby stewards of comedy. Uh, we, we, we all believed that we were making the best show on television. But I remember the yeah big, big battle to fight was uh, that we had no laugh track. And so Fox didn't really understand how this could be a comedy and how people would know that there were jokes if there was no laugh track. You have to remember this is 2000, 2001. Um, but I posit that uh, we, we broke ground and that uh, the, the sense of humor that is on display and undeclared um, is what would become the industry standard in comedy about 10 years after. Uh, knocked up, um, yeah, uh, that was uh, making a movie with a bunch of guys I've known for a long time. What did he look like? I shouldn't have gone in there. Don't go in there. Promise me you don't go in there. Proud that uh, Seth got to be the lead in something. Um, uh, there he hadn't before that, and uh, and was someone who I've known since we were 18. So super proud of him, and um, and yeah, I uh, that's a movie that means a lot more to people than I think a lot of us thought it might. How to Train a Dragon. I stumbled ass backwards into uh, yeah as important a role as I've ever played. Ever seen that? But we're gonna take this nice and slow. I, I auditioned, and I don't ever remember getting the gig. I just like audition and then started recording more and then they started paying me and um, it's not every day that you're part of something that is like people's favorite movie you know or um, and if you think about when you're a little kid and you like something you like it like it and there's and you and nothing in your adult life will you like as much as you liked it when you were a child <laughs> And the stuff you like when you're a child will steer you on to the kind of grown-up you become. Tropic Thunder, holy Moses. I got to, to, to work with and, and then just be privy to the uh, comedic genius of uh, Jack Black and Ben Stiller and Robert Downey Jr. Please, on that horn and get some firepower, boy! Jesus Christ! Ever seen that movie? It opens with a massive battle sequence. Um, that was day one. <laughs> And so uh, I had been uh, on Kauai in Hawaii for about six days or something at that point. And then all of a sudden, there I am in this big clearing. We have uh, 50 stunt performers, another 50 background performers, about two dozen cast, uh, two Huey helicopters, actual practical Hueys doing flyovers. And, um, and yeah, it's... If you don't get psyched up during that, uh, you should check your pulse. And what was super cool was the uh, crappy last Indiana Jones movie we were shooting on uh, Oahu, and they had half as many stock guys as we did. So uh, that was a, that was a point of pride on our set. Man seeking woman, I am uh, I'm the man in question, and. Uh, yeah, I am very, very fortunate that this thing found me. In, in, in my temp job, I actually have to deal with garbage quite frequently. Rarest of things, a pilot script where I actually laughed out loud uh, a bunch of times. We found out we, we had uh, gotten uh, canned. I'll, I'll, I'll quote Simon Rich, our, uh, our creator, and he said, listen, I'd rather be the Smiths than the Rolling Stones any day. And, uh, and so I, we, we think we gave the world three great records uh, with not a skippable track on any of them. I suggest you see Goon, Last of the Enforcers. Dog shit stuffed into f***ing ice skates, but 
could still bang. I've wanted to be a director since I was nine years old, and that's three years before my first day on set as an actor at 12. And even when I started at 12, Mom said, you know, you want to go to film school, well, being on set's the best film school in the world. When this thing found its way into my lap, you know, we were always going to make this movie, and I was always going to write it with my writing partner, Jesse, but, um, yeah, circumstances kind of threw me into the into the driver's seat, and uh, I left at the chance. And uh, single greatest experience of my life. I don't know that it's for everyone, but uh, we made a, a movie that we all think is super wicked. I've never been a captain before. I hope one day I could be the captain of your dreams. In theaters now and on demand.